Hello. Hi. What's up, Hi. Coach? Go ahead, guys. Nice hat. You got, of course. Love it. Coach, hey. what, are some of, what are some of the challenges that, you know, guys like Jeffrey Simmons and Danico Autry, guys who have a lot of size in the middle post for you guys as you try to find your rhythm offensively? Yeah, they're, uh, they're a challenge uh, not only in the run game or the pass game. They get after everyone up front. Uh, big physical guys that can keep their pads down. It's going to be a great challenge for our offensive line. Uh, great challenge, even at their linebacker level, um, of being able to get on these guys. Really physical defense across the board. Uh, you can't look at one position and say, well, this is a, a, a unit you can pick on. So it's going to be a great challenge for our guys up front. Justin, it looked like KJ did a lot of good things for you guys against Jacksonville, even when he wasn't catching the ball. Uh, if he's unable to go, how, how do you kind of replicate you know, his, his unique speed and the things he does? Yeah, you just gotta you gotta turn to somebody else, and that's kind of like how we've been doing it all season. You know, we've been hit with the injury bug, and you know the next guy's up. And you got to be smart with uh, the concepts that you put in originally. If you can't if you can't go, um, and you got to tweak some things. So you just got to be smart with uh, you know the talent that you have and what you're asking them to do. And um, uh, you know, I trust the guys that are going to be on the on the field, all eleven inside the the white lines. It's just you know you get those guys that that work their tail off, and you know you get a setback and you know, you got to push forward. So, you know, it's something we've been dealing with for all season, and, um, you know, it's something we're adjusting to each week. As you a just, follow to that, and, and you know, Jalen Virgil's a guy whose speed we saw in training camp. Where, where have you seen him behind the scenes? Because we haven't seen him a lot um, grow over the first half of the year. Yeah, Jalen's doing a great job progressively, getting better each week. Um, you know, the only thing you can evaluate, you know, in practice is the uh, practice squad type stuff and, you know, look team uh, and then the individual and then, the opportunities on routes versus air. Those are the things that you have to evaluate each and every day because you don't know what's going to happen the next day or the next play. So you got to always keep evaluations going throughout the entire practice throughout the week. You, you mentioned, mentioned the injuries. Next. You mentioned injuries, and on the offensive line, this week it's going to be a sixth different starting O line combination this season. So how how do you generate cohesion and chemistry when there are so many? injury leg shuffling is happening up front. Yeah, that's a great point. Like the chemistry part of it, it's it's a lot of uh, rhythm. It's a lot of timing up front. And that's not only with just uh, coming off the ball, it's the communication part portion of it. So, you know, a guy like Graham has done a great job with just being at every position internally throughout the entire off season when he got back from his injury and he's just gotten better. Um, he's a physical, tough, smart guy. And that's exactly what you're looking for at center. Um, we, we're going to lean on him a lot. We're going to lean on both those guys inside the guards and tackles. Like the combinations, you know, you could always say, like, there's, there's, it's very rare where an offensive line goes through an entire season without getting injured. Um, and you just got to find the right rhythm and the concepts that, that complement that. You can't just run concepts that don't match your unit up front. So you got to be smart with that as well. Are you surprised at all at how much of an impact uh, uh, Greg Dulcich has had in his first three games? Um, you know, watching the college tape coming out, you could see the explosiveness. You could see, um, you know, the, the tools that he has. Uh, what's impressed me the most is just the overall tight end, um, being able to do everything, um, the, the ability to line up in certain spots, the ability to put your hands on a guy that's 300 pounds and block him and, and stay on him. Those are the encouraging things that I see with him. And, um, you know, he's elevating everyone else. You know, he's a young guy, doesn't say much. Um, but everyone looks to him and kind of sees his practice habits and what can he do or somebody else do in that unit or another unit to match it. So he's, he's been a really good uh, addition for us. What do you think you guys can do better in converting third down? Uh, I think conceptually we have to be a little bit smarter as far as, you know, looking around the league, you're seeing a lot more zone coverage instead of man coverage. Taking advantage of those situations, um, have conceptual um, – Variety where you can have a man beater and a zone beater at the same time. And, you know, the first and second down portion has a lot to do with that. Just the ability to limit the penalties. And I think we had, uh, we were averaging seven yards uh, a penalty just taking the overall yards and uh, the amount of penalties we had. And you're putting yourself behind the sticks. You're limiting yourself. And I believe we were at 37% uh, efficient as far as getting a first down after a penalty. So that you're really hurting yourself in those situations. So we have to be better in those aspects of the controllables, like pre-snap, and you know those are the things like the taunting and all that stuff. You got to eliminate those things so you can help us out. So you've been your own worst enemy then, 
Are these easy things to correct then? It sounds, sounds like it. Yeah, I think, you know, the guy's getting used to, you know, everything as far as the cadence and, and everything that comes into that. I think they're being more comfortable and they're a little bit more um, mindful of everything. Um, so we're looking for that and we're making a huge emphasis in the meetings and also on the practice field as far as just holding your water, make sure you lock into the cadence and really overemphasizing those things. Russ is uh, wearing the, you know, the play sheet on his wrist has become a little bit of a story this week. How does that, his play sheet, compare to the one you've got in front of you in the coach's box besides larger print, I suppose? Yeah, you want to limit those uh, those plays on the wristband. It's typically the ones that are a little bit more verbiagey um, and a lot more, uh, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. You want to be smart with that. So, you know, having guys that are in different positions with injuries at the skill positions and just we want to take advantage of getting in and out of the huddle as well. So it could get verbiage in, in special situations. And that's across the board, you know, around the league. You can you get a little bit more creative in those aspects. So just getting certain plays on that, that, that thing so he can get it out a little bit quicker. Everyone hears a little bit better instead of just being in a no huddle situation where somebody, somebody can't hear you. So it's just it's really just locking into certain plays on that call sheet that we can just take advantage of on that. Why wasn't Russ just wearing the um, wristband from the get-go then at the beginning of the season? Uh, it was just a, it's a relationship thing as far as how, you know, we function as an offense. And you look around the league and you're sitting there going, well, how are we uh, behind in, you know, play clocks? And how are we doing, you know, certain things early on in the season? How can we help this? So we're, we're always digging and trying to find things that, to help us out. You know, this is just something uh, that we can get in his hands. And, you know, even all the players can look at it as well. They're going to see what's on the wristband. They can expect what's on the wristband to be called. That way it's not, it's not just taken away from Russ. It's, it's everybody being on the same page that have the long play calls throughout the entire game. In your estimation, how much did that help in terms of getting the play calls out and getting in and out of the huddle against Jacksonville? I think it was effective. I think it's, you know, nothing was ever forced. I think it was an open line of communication throughout everything. I think it was very effective for the last game, and uh, we can build off of it. Thank you so much, Coach. Thanks, Thanks guys.